Do you suffer from irregular or painful periods, mood swings, endometriosis, PCOS or cystic acne? Then stay tuned because I'm going to be giving you some natural tips and remedy to help you along your way. And guys, if you're new to my channel and you want to improve your health and well-being, welcome. But please make sure that you hit that subscribe button, tick the notification bell so that you'll be the first to know when I upload a new video. Hey guys and welcome to Live Well with Tia and the purpose of this channel is to inspire, motivate and coach you into a healthier lifestyle. Today I'm going to be touching on our hormones and if you've watched my video on endometriosis you will know that I have suffered from a hormone imbalance for such a long time and I have learned that when our hormones are in balance it can have such a knock-on effect on our general health and well-being and boy did I learn the hard way. Now you know that saying when life gives you lemons make yourself some lemonade? Well when life gave me endometriosis I made it a goal of mine to make sure that I understood everything about it so that I can share, help and encourage other women going through the same process. Now guys, I'm a solution kind of woman. So when I face a problem, I like to go and find a solution in the most natural way possible. So I really do hope that all of the recommendations that I'm gonna give you in this video will be a huge help to you, but also give you some sort of comfort. Okay, so let's touch on what some of the signs can be that you have a hormonal imbalance. This could include irregular periods. Now, whether that's you having more than one period in a month, or not having a period for quite a long time. Um, another sign can be heavy periods. Now, I know a lot of people's periods are heavy and that can be normal. However, if it does interrupt your daily life, that can also be a sign. Other signs can be tiredness, not being able to sleep well, um, maybe feeling sick at times, headaches and cystic acne. Now, there are plenty of more signs of a hormonal imbalance. I've just touched on these because these are ones that I've personally experienced myself. However, if you do want me to touch on this a little bit more, then again, just let me know in the description box below. But also guys, there can be many reasons that can cause these symptoms as well that's not hormonal related. So please make sure that if you do have a suspicion that you might be suffering from a hormone related condition then please do consult your doctor first or speak to a naturopathic doctor that can help you to um, investigate this a little bit further. There are plenty of tests out there that can diagnose this so I really do recommend it. That's the path that I went down myself um, but what I really do not recommend is that you turn to the biggest doctor that everybody turns to first and that is the Google doctor. Now, I'm not saying that the information on Google is wrong. However, Google cannot diagnose you personally. So please make sure that you get the right diagnosis before you implement any lifestyle changes. Now, after I posted my endometriosis video, a lot of people asked me whether or not I'm still experiencing those symptoms myself now. And if I am, what am I doing to help myself in this process? Now, I am still awaiting another op, so I do have the symptoms still. However, I really and strongly believe that in this past year, and everybody who knows me can vouch for this, I have come leaps and bounds to where I was. And I still get the symptoms. I don't get as many as I used to. However, I have managed to overcome the symptoms that I do get without relying on any medication whatsoever. Now I'm gonna be giving you some tips and resources that I have implemented myself and that has helped me deal with my pain and my symptoms naturally. Okay guys, so let's get to it. Tip number one, medication. Now guys, please refrain from any medicines unless it's absolutely necessary. And this includes like birth control um, or medicated painkillers because all these will do is pacify the symptoms but it will not get to the root cause of your hormonal imbalance. Tip number two, stay away from those processed foods and refined sugars. Now guys, there's a saying that you've heard me say and that I'm going to continue to say because it's a quote that I live by and that is to let thy food be thy medicine. I cannot stress the importance of this. Guys, what you put into your body will either have a positive or a negative effect. Please bear that in mind. 
Now, I'm not gonna go in depth on these processed foods and refined sugars or what they can do in this video, but if you do want me to touch on it in another video, then let me know in the comment box below. Because guys, if you do not stay away from those high processed foods, I promise you, it is going to take you a lot, lot longer to get through your symptoms or to heal from them naturally. Because in these processed foods, there are chemicals that can attack your hormones. And I say attack, probably a better word to say that can damage your hormones or imbalance your hormones. <laughs> now creating a healthy and balanced diet that will help you with your hormonal imbalances is not difficult if you know where to start. But guys, if you need some more tips and you don't know what foods to implement, um, please do leave me a message in the comment box below and together we can help get you back on track. But just to name a few foods that you can implement to your diet are some extremely healthy fats. Now a lot of people hear the word fats and alarm bells go off and they're like, no, I don't want to add any more fats to my diet. That's why I said healthy fats. Now some of those foods can include chia seeds, avocados, nuts, and coconut. There are plenty and plenty of more healthy fats out there. I will put a few more extra ones in the description box below for you. Now I do recommend implementing some supplements. Now I don't really recommend the multivitamins and stuff like that because there are lots of minerals and vitamins that you can get from food. However, the supplements that I do take myself, I'm just going to quickly show you right now. So I do take vitamin D. Now I have the tablet format, but I also have the liquid format and I will put the link in the description box below and the reasons why vitamin D is vital to help you balance your hormones. Another supplement that I take is zinc and I also take what I call NAC. I'm going to say NAC because I cannot pronounce the actual word for it. So um, I will put these in the description box below. Now another herb that I'd like to mention is maca root. I did just use maca root in the video that I just previously posted, which is a yummy and nutritious recipe to help you balance your hormones. So you will be able to find the benefits there if you want to watch the video, but I will also, just to help you out, put the benefits in the description box below. Okay guys, tip number three, and that is exercise. That's right, exercise. I know that when you're on your period, the last thing that you want to do is work out. Now, the reason why this is important, because during a period, our estrogen levels are really low, so all of those feel-good hormones are not really there. So that's why we tend to feel more lower during our periods. So this is why it's important to stay proactive. Now guys, I'm not talking about weightlifting or doing a million squat jumps, etc. I'm just simply talking about going for a nice walk, a nice long brisk walk, um, doing some active dynamic stretches, um, and even just a light workout is okay. But what's most important is that you do not just sit and allow those negative hormones to kill all our feel good hormones off and do nothing about it because I promise you, they will be the worst periods that you have. They will be the periods that you tend to feel the most lethargic, the most tired, and the most unproductive. And when we as women feel unproductive, that is enough to send our hormones through the roof. Also guys, adding those dark leafy greens into your diet is so important. Whether it's in a salad, in a meal, or in a smoothie, is so important when you have a hormonal imbalance to add them. And I will put in the description box below why. Another one is caffeine, because caffeine is a nervous system stimulant and it can have a really damaging effect on your adrenal glands, which plays a huge role in your hormones. Now I know for you coffee lovers, that's like the worst thing that you wanna hear. I know because I used to love my coffee. So please do try and reduce your caffeine intake, even if it's reducing it to one coffee a day or replacing it to more herbal teas, like a green tea, um, for example. Tip number four, sleep. Now, our body needs the rest it needs in order for it to repair itself. Now, the cortisol hormone, which is linked to our adrenal glands, is at its lowest around midnight. So if we're getting those super late nights and we're going to bed way past midnight, guaranteed they are gonna be the nights that we tend to be a lot more restless and wake up feeling like we haven't 
had a lot of sleep and that will have a huge effect on our hormones. Okay, so tip number five guys, and that is pain relief, natural pain relief. I did mention earlier that I really want to encourage you not to just run for those painkillers instantly and really do try some natural um, methods because I used to be one of those people that as soon as I got a headache or I got a really bad stomach cramp, I would just take a paracetamol or an ibuprofen and it really did leave a lasting damaging effect on my body when you do that all the time. So yes, let me just show you some natural ways that I myself has helped manage my symptoms and I really do apply these every single month. It's not just something that I am just throwing out there to you. Um, so the first thing I want to recommend is a heated bean bag. Now, this you just pop it into the microwave and you just pop it in there for about a minute or a minute or two. Um, and I always just put a few drops of lavender on there and then I just apply it to where it's like really, really painful. And I, I cannot stress so much how this has been my actual lifesaver. But if you don't have a heated bean bag or a water bottle, you can also sit in a nice hot bath. Now, before you do anything that I recommend, please make sure that you consult your doctor first because, for example, with a hot bath, if you suffer from any um, blood pressure related issues, that can be quite harmful. I suffer from low blood pressure, and if I sit in a hot bath, it can make me slightly dizzy. So please, please consult your doctor first. Um, now, this next one that I wanna show you, I basically suffer from really bad lower back pains during my period, as well as during the month. And I know many other women suffer from this as well. So I have invested in this. I will put the link in the description box below. And it is a heated mat. Now, I either sit on a sofa and I put this behind me and for at least half an hour, I will sit there and allow it to rest on my lower back. And it does have different temperature settings as well. Um, but when I go to bed, that's when I tend to use it the most. At least half an hour, I will lie in bed before I go to sleep with that on my back and I cannot stress to you how this has helped me. It has literally helped my pains tremendously. So that is a huge recommendation. Now, another thing that I will do um, for my pain and that is rub on essential oils. So I tend to mix it with some coconut oil and I will mix geranium, which is super good for your hormones by the way, um, lavender, which is really calming. Tea tree, just a tiny bit of tea tree. Peppermint oil and eucalyptus with some coconut oil. And when I get the cramps really bad, I tend to just massage my whole abdom abdominal area. And especially where the cramps are, I tend to just massage outwards and just to release some of the, the, the tension that you feel when you're having those cramps. And I promise you it will help. I do this before I go to bed and guaranteed if I do it before I go to sleep, the cramps do not wake me up throughout the night. So I definitely recommend those essential oils and I will put it in the description box below all of the essential oils I have mentioned as well as where you can buy them from. Now, another thing that I suffer with, and I call it my endo belly, it's embarrassing, it's painful, and I'm just gonna put up a few pictures for you to see, and it's not pretty, because it gets really swollen, and it's really, really hard, like rock solid, and it feels like my, well, I feel like my lower area is completely on fire. Wherever it's swollen, it just feels like it's on fire constantly. And when I do, I tend to implement some anti-inflammatory foods. Now, whether I just put that in a smoothie or I eat them, but I have a lot of ginger and turmeric, for example, and anything else that's good for inflammation, I tend to implement it and completely stay away from any caffeine and sugars when I have that. So I really do hope that those Simple, natural pain reliefs will be a huge help for you like they have been for me. And I also just want to mention that cramps or menstrual cramps can also be a sign of muscle weakness and iron deficiency. So really do go to your doctors and check if you do have an iron deficiency because I found that to be one of my, my reasons behind my symptoms. And since I've upped my iron intake, it has helped a lot. And it might also mean that you may have to strengthen those abdominal muscles as well. Tip number six, stress. Now, <laughs> I do know that it is easier said than done to eliminate stress. 
Whether it's because you are a parent or you're in a high demand job or life in general can be stressful. I do understand that it's not that easy to just close the door on stress and it no longer be there. But there are many things that you can do to help eliminate stress because when our stress levels are up here, it also means that our hormone levels are like this. So it's super important that we do manage our stress. And you can do this by cutting that caffeine because I promise you that will have a huge effect on your stress levels if you continue to drink caffeine. Um, just general exercise, as I mentioned earlier, um, and my next point will also help you out with your stress levels. Tip number seven, and that's to pray and meditate. We just touched on why it's so important that we bring those stress levels down in order to balance our hormones. So by taking some time out to just be still and spend time in prayer and just let go and let God do what he needs to do, by letting out all of your burdens, all of those anxieties, all of those worries, and simply replacing them with attitudes of gratitudes, I promise you this will bring you a sense of calmness that everything else I mentioned won't even be able to do. So I really, really do hope that you will take some time out for you. And guys, if you feel after watching this video that you may have a health condition related to a hormonal imbalance or that you might even be having some of the symptoms that I've mentioned today, then let me know in the comment box below and also let me know if you do have one of these conditions and what you're doing to help your symptoms. I'd love to hear all about it. I'd love for us to chat more about it and to just support one another through this because at the end of the day, you are not alone and through platforms like this, we're able to support and encourage one another through it. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video and for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. And if you did like this video, please be sure to like, share and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you will be the first to know when I upload a new video. But as I mentioned earlier, if you do want me to touch on this topic further, or you want me to touch on any other topic, just let me know in the comment box below because it really does help me to serve you better. But until we see each other next, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay blessed. Stressing, I better count my blessings. Life could be more.